So today we're going to talk about soldering um, and the three the gases that we can use. The three gas bottles I've got here, the first two, the blue one and the maroon one or red, is just plain liquid propane gas or LPG. The yellow one is the one plumbers mostly use, it's MAP gas. That is propane and acetylene mix. The reason for that is it gives you a much hotter flame. Most plumbers prefer this one because if there's water in the pipe, the temperature of this flame evaporates the water and there's a better chance of getting a, getting a solder joint on it. Propane, you can do it, but it just takes a bit longer, depending on how much water is left in the pipe that you can't get out. Now the propane gas burns at 1,980 degrees centigrade or 3,580 degrees Fahrenheit and the MAP gas burns at 2,927 degrees centigrade or 5,300 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's a much hotter flame. So I'm going to do a wee test first of all on these two pieces of pipe. I'm going to heat them up to they go cherry red and then we'll see which one goes first. So on my left hand, I have got the normal propane gas and on my right hand, I've got the map gas. I'm going to turn them on. I'm going to just put them at the end of the pipe. The warmest part of the flame is where the light blue meets the dark blue. I'll hold them on to it. When one goes cherry red, I'll take the gas bottle off and leave the other one on and see how long it takes. See if there's a gap in seconds between them. So I'm going to light them now. Both are full on. And I'm going to heat them up. This is just an example of which ones will go cherry red first. So I can see right away the map gas is heating up. It's getting red. That's a couple of seconds between the different types of flames. Obviously if there's water in it, that extra boost in temperature gets rid of all the water and it's a more easy to solder. So I'm going to let them cool down for a second. I'm going to cut some pipe and we're going to solder a 22 mil equal T piece. We're going to prepare it, we're going to put it in the vise, we're going to solder it and I'll talk through the process of how solder works and what I think is probably the easiest way of doing it. Obviously, we're in a workshop. I'll talk about if you're in, in a situation, a wall behind you, tiles behind you, that sort of thing. So I've got 20 mil copper pipe here. I'm going to cut it two ways. I'm going to use the old pipe cutters that we used to use in an apprenticeship, when I was an apprentice all those years ago. And it works with a cutting wheel, two rollers, and we've got a handle. Where you go from left to right, it pushes the rollers in, tightens the pipe, and then the cutting wheel cuts through the pipe. Now these are old fashioned. We've got a reaming tool already built into it. We also used to use that as a marker. So we'd measure the length of the pipe, we'd mark it with the edge of the, edge of the pipe cutters. I would open it up, put the cutting wheel onto the mark, and then tighten it up. Once it's tight, I wouldn't do two or three turns, because what happens is you squash the pipe and then you can't turn it. So I'd give it a quarter of a turn, and then I would turn the pipe cutters over. Either way, it doesn't matter. I can go back and forward. I keep doing that until it becomes loose. Then I do it again. Quarter turn, back and forward, or right round, until it becomes loose. And then I keep going to eventually, the cutting wheel cuts right through the pipe, and then the pipe falls off. It takes a bit of time. Now on the end of the pipe, we call that a burr. So we've got to take that burr off because that burr could restrict the flow of water. Not just that one. If we've got a pipe with 20 fittings in it, maybe two or three fittings on three, two or three cuts on each pipe, that could slow the water or gas down. So we use the end of this tool, the deburring section of it, and we twist it in, and that takes the burr off it. And also, especially in the 22 mil pipe, that is really, really sharp. If you try to pick something off that, there's a chance you could cut your finger. So what you're doing is you're doing two jobs. You're making it a bit safer and getting rid of it. So that's the old monument style pipe cutters. Most plumbers, or every plumber now, has these pipe slices. Again, I would just measure the size of the pipe. I'd put it in, and all you do is clip this on. That's me ready to start. It only works one way, 
Some of them have got an arrow telling you the direction that it cuts on. If I take it the wrong way, it just falls off, so it can't go that way. If I click it on, on the size, I've got the cutting wheel again on the inside, but there's also a join line halfway through the, the pipe slices. I can line that up with the mark, and all I do is turn it the correct way. As I turn it, it pulls the cutting wheel in automatically. It's on a sort of spring inside the, inside the cutters, and eventually just cuts through. If I do that again, I get another pipe, I've got my thumb on where I want it to mark, I put the line on my thumb, click it in, twist it round, and that cuts it. The downside with this is we don't have a reaming tool. So we can buy different types of tools. There's ones like a pen, you can just sort of run round. This one's got a concaved and a convexed end. The convexed end goes inside the pipe, you turn it round, it does exactly the same job. It takes that bar off the inside and then I can run it on the outside and smooth it, and smooth it outside out as well. So what I've got is I've got three pipes ready for my T-piece. Make sure these are cool. Use the back of your hand. Take them out. Put them out of the way. So now that is my 22mm equal T-piece. I know it's a 22mm equal T-piece because three sides are the exact same. If I was to pick up the smaller one, that's a 50 mil equal T piece. And that's what I'd ask for if I went to the merchants. Now T pieces get a bit complicated. I also have this one. I mean, I went to, if I ask for this one, it's obviously a reducing T. So I've got 22 mil this side, 15 mil this side, and 15 mil at the top. And you always go along the length of the T piece when you're going to buy these. So this one is a 22, 15, 15 T piece, reducing T. The other one that I have here is a 22, 15, 22 T piece. That's what I'd ask for. Always along the bottom first and ask for the branch last. So we've got 22 mil, and these ones are called end feed T pieces. If I show you a Yorkshire or solder T, if I look inside, I can see a ring of solder. All I do is prep the pipe and fit in the exact same way, put some flux on and solder it. I don't in theory have to add any solder on it, but I would always add a small bit just to make sure they get a good joint. So if I show you the difference between an end feed tea and a Yorkshire tea, you can see the Yorkshire tea or the solder tea is just slightly longer. It's obviously a bit heavier because of the solder on it as well. You can actually feel that when you pick them up and probably a higher grade of copper as well. But both absolutely fine. And the solder that's in the, end, the solder ring tea is lead-free solder because that could be used on drinking water. So when you buy a pack of solder teas or solder fittings, they've all got lead-free solder in it. I'll put that down. So the next thing I need to do is prepare the pipe and the fitting. So I've got my tea piece and my pipe. I can use a cleaning pad. And what I'm doing is I'm cleaning the top to make it nice and shiny. That gets all the grease, debris, anything that's on it. Sometimes when you buy pipe and bundles, it comes with a yellow sticky tape on it. That could be on it as well. But as soon as you put a flame onto that, it starts to burn and then starts to oxidise and then the solder doesn't run properly. So I clean the ends of the pipe, making sure I get everything off. And with the 22 mm equal T-piece, I would do the inside of the T-piece as well. Even though when you buy them new, and they're out of box or out of packet, there could be some stuff in it. So all I'm doing, is making sure that everything I'm going to solder, all the surfaces, are nice and clean and polished. This just helps the solder and the flux to run through and you always get a better joint. They're always good habits to get into, preparing everything properly and making sure they're fine. So I'm just going to put this piece of pipe in a vise just to hold it, to make it easier for you to watch. And then I get the flux. The flux we use in the college is Laco flux. It's self-cleaning or active flux. What do you mean by an active flux is if I put it on the pipe and just leave it there for a long time, it goes green and eventually will rot through the pipe, but that will take a bit of time. But if there's a weakness in the pipe that we've got, it will find that and you'll get a pinhole or a very, very small leak. The reason we buy Laco fluxes 
in the colleges because it comes with its own brush. And we've got other sort of uh, cut and paste and everything. And sometimes the brushes got crossed over and contaminated. So all I do is put a bit of flux on the brush, an active flux. You can buy non-active fluxes. They are still about. And the, the, the non-active non fluxes, sorry, don't start to work until you put some heat on it. Then they start to clean the pipe. Even though you've cleaned the pipe, a lot of people don't clean the pipe because it's a self-cleaning flux. They think they don't have to. But I would always prep it properly anyway. You put a small bit of flux on it, not too much. Then I get a T-piece. Some plumbers put a bit of flux on the inside of the T-piece and then push it on. Now what that does is, the flux gathers inside the T-piece of the elbow of the straight. If you're using it in hot water, central heating or cold water, it will flush that away and you'll see some sort of green debris coming through your tap when you turn the water on for the first time. In gas, that flux is just gathered up in there if you put too much on and it restricts the flow of the gas. So in good practice, you don't flux inside of the fittings, although some plumbers do. If you've cleaned it properly and you've just fluxed the end of the pipe, that should be enough. Then I put a T-piece on. I prepped the other two, so I'm going to put them as well. I put a small wiping of flux on. I push that in. And then the one at the top. So now I can see I've got excess flux on the outside of all the fittings. I could use a rag on my finger to wipe that off to get rid of it. If I leave that on, as soon as I start to put the gas bottle on it, that starts to burn. It oxidizes the pipe and then it makes it harder for the flux, the solder to run as well. So I'm going to use MAP gas for this and I'm going to use a lead-free solder. Most plumbers would just buy lead-free solder now. They're roughly the same price. There's not a big difference. And you can use this on everything, central heating, gas, drinking water, hot and cold storage water. So you can still buy lead, leaded solda, but you're always better off just buying a lead free. It's just, it's just the same price. So now I'm going to solder. So these fittings, the end feed fittings, are also called capillary fittings. And that means the two surfaces, the outside of the pipe and the inside of the fitting, are so close together, any liquid will fill that. It'll even go against gravity. Again, that's the way the water gets to the top of trees. Um, something to do with the density of water and the gap between it, it gets drawn up. If we're lucky and I heat it up properly, you'll actually see the solder going round the fitting and then getting drawn in. When I put the heat on, I leave the heat on. I never take it off and swap it from solder to heat. I just keep the heat on and when I can see the pipe and the fitting touching together, I'll touch it with the solder. It may not melt the first time, I'll touch it again. It may not do it the second time. The third time, I may get a small silver dot on there from the solder. And when I see that, I know the copper's at temperature and the solder's at temperature. And then I'll put a bit more on. They say roughly 22 mil of solder for 22 mil pipe, 15 mil length of solder for 15 mil pipe. And that should run round and then get drawn in. Then I'll move quickly to the next end. Now because copper's a good conductor of heat, the second and third joint is always less. Also, if I'm doing a T-piece on site, I would never, or a bend, do half of it and then come back at a later date, clean it, and then put that other pipe in. The reason for that is, if it's on a level platform like this, the solder could run from the top pipe into that joint, and then when it cools down, I can't get the pipe in. Also, if I'm working on site and I get distracted and I've done half of the, the fitting, I think I've done all of it and I turn the water on and, I, and I'll, I'll end up with a leak. So what I do is when I do any fittings, you do the whole thing in one hit. So a T-piece, I've got three pieces of pipe. If I've got an elbow, two pieces of pipe and I make sure both of them are soldered as I do them. So now I'm going to put the heat on. I can move the flame through the pipe a wee bit if I want just to try and sort of get more heat going to it. I can just hold the, the, the gas bottle on and then I'll add the solder. This is all about timing. There's no great technique to it. Once you get the timing, you can do it next to a wall, heat mat behind it. You can even do it if there's a wee bit of water in it, especially when I've got map gas. So I'm going to start now. I put the heat on. I'm heating the fitting. I'm going to touch it. Not yet. Again. Not yet. Again. There's a small bit on it. Add a bit more. 
check the other side, make sure it's run round. I'm doing the top one now. Add a bit more on it. There we go, it gets drawn in. Check right round, and then the last one. And if there's any drips in the bottom, I can just flick them off. Obviously being careful if anyone's standing next to me or beside me. So now that flux has run round. I've seen it get drawn in. I can do a visual check, make sure the solder's went right round, let it cool down. And once it's cooled down, I could have some flux left on the pipe. So it's good practice, once it's nice and cool, maybe get a cloth, a, bit, a damp cloth or your heat pad and just give it a nice polish up and make it more presentable. If I leave the flux on, that will definitely go green and look quite horrible. And that all looks nice and presentable, nice and clean. And obviously when I turn the water on, any flux that's left inside will just get washed through the taps. And that's soldering.